Hi everyone, my name is Laurie Rousseau-Nepton. I'm a Canadian resident astronomer here at the Canada France Hawaii Telescope in Hawaii. I am also a member of the First Nation of Masayash in Quebec. Uh, so I'm very pleased to be here today to talk to you about uh, how native communities were seeing eclipses. Um, so uh, depending on where you are in America or in the world, uh, the way each communities would see the eclipse was very different. And in native communities, it's also very important to know that most of the information about their uh, knowledge on astronomy um, was, a, uh, was um, on the form of uh, small legends, small history um, that were passed to one generation to another, like a, an oral tradition. So um, if we start with uh, the Inuits, uh, it's very important to know that their, um, the way they were seeing time is very different. Uh, they have a very long night and a very long day during the year. Um, and they were uh, fearing the solar eclipse. Um, and during that moment, they would hide in their house, close their window, close their door, because they thought that the moon or the sun uh, was going to be able to enter in their house. And if we go a little bit further south, in Ontario, you have a community called the N Dakimenan, uh, close to Lake Temagami. And they have a very nice story about a little boy who was trapping animals. And one day he was walking and there was a bit of snow on the ground and he saw a track of snow that has melted in, um, in the forest. So he decided, decided to follow that track. And without it knowing what was the animal, he put his trap right on the track. And he went back to his, um, to his village. The day after that, the sun wouldn't rise. And everyone asked to the little boy, where have you put your trap? Um, and so they went all together to the trap and realized that the sun was trapped there. And it was so hot that no one could even get close enough to release the sun. So all the animals also tried, the bird, the moose, and the squirrel, they tried to release the sun, but none of them were able to get close enough. And then a beaver was able to gnaw the trap and release the sun. And this explains why the beaver has brown too today. It has been burned a little bit by the heat of the sun. Um, so another story from now the northwest of the US, uh, from the Pomo community, um, tells a story about a bear that decided to fight with the sun and bite the sun. And this is uh, the moment when the eclipse starts. And he finally managed to resolve his issues with the sun and, and then went to the moon and took a bite of the moon. And this story is very, very interesting because it explains why you would uh, often observe a moon eclipse two weeks or two weeks before or two weeks after a solar eclipse. And you have to observe uh, many eclipses to notice that and put that story together. Um, if we go now further south on the central portion of America, you have um, also back in time the Mayan and the Aztec community. Um, they both had a very strong uh, cult uh, on the sun. Uh, their main god was the sun. And uh, during the eclipse, they fear uh, that the sun wouldn't come back and they had to sacrifice uh, people to uh, release the anger from the god. Um, and just to give you an idea, in this community, sacrifices were really common. The people were doing it willingly. Um, and in between the 4th and the 16th century, more than 3 million people were sacrifices for, uh, for the sun and other gods. And um, yeah, so, so it was something very, very common. Um, if we go a little bit further south again, you have the Inca community. Um, in their case, the solar eclipse was the moment where a puma swallowed the sun. And um, they wanted to, f uh, to afraid the beast so that it would, um, it would release the sun. So they were making sound. Uh, they would even uh, make their child uh, cry to afraid the beast. And the Pima was one of their god too. It was the god of the mountain. 
And there's another story that tells that during storm, it's the puma that is very, very angry. And you can hear it uh, by the thunder. Uh, and you also see the lightning. And the lightning represents the, the light uh, in the back of his eyes. So um, now just two other small stories uh, from other parts of the world, one in Africa and one in Australia. One very nice from Africa tells the story about uh, the sun and the moon, men and women, um, and they were a couple, but they split out. And the stars were the, their child, and they also decided to split the child. Um, so they go uh, uh, on each side, and at some point the moon wasn't happy about that deal, so she decided to go back to the sun to gather all the kids together and bring them back at home, at her home. So this is when the solar eclipse happened. So they fight, but when the moon realized that even their kids were fighting together, she decided to uh, send a message of peace, which was a rainbow, and she went back uh, to her house. So this is a very nice story. And <laughs> also an another one from Australia uh, that tells that the solar eclipse was the moment when the moon and the sun were finally uh, getting together as a couple. So yeah. That's about it, but you have to remember that for each community, um, um, the, the way they see the eclipse is very different, and you can have a very different story from one community to another. So the stories I told you today uh, were just a small portion of all the, uh, the stories you can get uh, from, from them. Thank you.